All right, back to our RV. Uh, I'm getting a layout for where I'm gonna put the gas cooktop, which is gonna be this little two burner model right here, Flame King. Um, it's gonna have a gas line that goes from here out into the what used to be the O2 uh, storage for the ambulance, and I'm gonna commence to cutting. All right, cutout is done. The stovetop is ready to install. Had the hatchet, the divider out of the compartment as well. And now I'm gonna drill a hole for the gas line. I've got a four foot gas line I'm gonna run through the back of that cabinet. Angle it between that space between the cabinet and the outer wall and into our O2 compartment. All right, I was able to get the gas line ran back to this compartment and fortunately where the oxygen tank hose came in. I was able to feed that through into the oxygen compartment, so the hole's already pre-drilled for that. So now I'm getting ready to cut out for the uh, range hood vent, which is going to go right up in there above the range tub. So once again, like installing the windows and other things that went through the outside, I just marked it from the inside, drilled some holes in the corners of what the cutout's going to be, and now I'll go cut it from the outside. Okay, I got the hole laid out and cut with the uh, circular saw. I'm just going to use a saber saw, or actually a little cordless hacksaw to uh, clean up the corners. That's the nice thing about using a cut in aluminum. Um, you can use regular wood tools with it. It works pretty well. Uh, aluminum is soft enough. So I'm just going to clean that out. The hole will be cut. Alright, the hole is cut. Now I just have to lay out the ductwork for the uh, range hood. And uh, get it installed. Keep watching. All right, so now what I've done is temporarily install the range hood vent. I've got the uh, hole cut out. I've got the uh, the outside plastic vent just temporarily installed. It's not screwed in place yet. Um, and now I'm going to lay out. You can see back there, but I'm going to lay out the. Uh, I've kind of marked with a magic marker the back of the range hood and where the vent is, so I can. Uh, fabricate an aluminum channel to vent it out to the uh, the vent cover. Ah, you can see the little flashing of the vent hood flap. Anyway, I'm gonna... You know, back to the uh, stove vent installation, I decided to play with these wires more to see if I could figure out anything else they might go to before. Before I put the vent hood in, I've got to put that back panel in place. Uh, mount the wall switches and figure out, you know, I'll go ahead and go ahead and label and switch everything I've got identified anyway. So I was playing around with it and I, I did miraculously find the wire that will power the radio on even if the uh, main batteries to the, uh, the, the ambulance are turned off. So this is, is powering off of our 12 volt system. It'll be the RV system. Turn it on. <laughs> The radio comes on, and that'll power the speakers back here. You know, little things, but I'm excited. Yeah, man, a little Bob Marley playing in the background. All right, we're back to uh, getting my control panel, the back panel behind the uh, the stove, the coffee pot, where the, the vent hood is going to go. Uh, something that really takes forever, but it's kind of cool, is the customization. I actually was able to use part of the... Uh, let me turn that off. Part of the uh, ambulance control panel. And I decided to go ahead and use that because um, it's got LED lighting. And it's a little able to... Uh, cut this panel down to size, literally break that LED panel and re-screw it down to a shortened panel. Um, so at night, uh, it'll illuminate some of these uh, labels for what the switches are. We're cheating a little bit. The master actually just controls, uh, let me try to do this with one hand, uh, literally just controls the LED lights themselves, turns those off in case they're, we're bothered by trying to sleep with that at night. Um, the speaker actually controls, I was able to find the switch that turns the radio on from the RV power supply or my power supply back here. Suction pump is no longer a suction pump, that's actually now the uh, water pump for the sink. Right dome is for the right dome. 
<laughs> Sorry about all the movement in this video. <laughs> uh, what do you do? Left dome is for oh, the left dome lights. There we go. And fluorescent light. We actually had one fluorescent lights that did originally control the uh, ceiling fluorescent lights, which I have not been able to get operating. But it did have a small under cabinet fluorescent light, which we really needed a light above the sink. So if I turn that on, we now have lights under the sink. Today, I will get the panel installed. I've got a uh, 110 volt receptacle to put in this panel as well. Uh, I've got a uh, propane and carbon monoxide detector to put in this panel. And then of course this panel itself. Um, what I've done is uh, used a piece of quarter inch plywood and used contact cement to uh, stick a piece of uh, aluminum sheeting on that. So that's gonna be our back panel. Look at all that wiring. What a cluster. Ah, uh, yeah. So that's what I'm gonna use for the back panel. Uh, I just have to cut the holes uh, for the all the stuff that's gonna go in at the outlet, uh, our control panel, <laughs> and the uh, uh, carbon monoxide propane detector. And I'll have to notch out the top for the vent hood, as you can see, which is going to go right there. Anyway, stay touch. We'll, we'll, we'll get this done. Yet. I promise. Okay, I've got my uh, layout on the panel. The top section I'll be able to cut out with a table saw. Um, these smaller sections, I've drilled some tiny holes through. I'll be able to cut part of this with a table saw, but I've done some tiny holes in each corner, laid it out on the back. So whatever I can't cut from the front, I will uh, saber saw out from the rear. And it goes on. <laughs> 